Why is it that every time something disastrous happens, the internet's initial reaction is Islamophobic rhetoric? Gee, I don't know. Maybe it's because almost all of the terrorist attacks right now are by Muslims. Howdy y'all, this is Russian Outlaw here. Today, I have a video by Pop... Pop... Popped Feminist? Uh, whatever the frick its name is. Anyways, now, let's get on with the video. That's a question we had to ask ourselves again on Monday night after Ariana Grande's Manchester concert was the site of a large explosion. So, today, we're here to discuss these perennial misconceptions on Teen Vogue's Pop Feminist. Hey guys, I'm your host Sandra Song, and today we're here with Amani Al Kataba, author and founder of MuslimGirl.com. Amani, first of all, I want to just thank you for coming in today. Of course, and thank you for having me. Yeah, I think we should just start off with um, expressing our condolences, our deepest condolences to the victims and their families. I think you know we should talk a little bit about the immediate reaction on social media. What would you say to these people? Whenever a terrorist attack like this happens, uh, Muslims are always the ones to be collectively blamed. Well, it is your religion who's doing the majority of the terrorist attacks, despite their population being not so big in the Western world. Uh, and it is really unfair. Um, I think that, you know, when it comes to ISIS, of course they'll want to claim responsibility for an attack like this because they do want to drive fear into the hearts and minds of people that want to be living in peace. Uh, they do want to drive that wedge, that division between us. Um, and so when we kind of play into that, that really is just like doing exactly what they want us to do. And it is a life or death situation for many Muslims that have to deal with uh, an increase of attacks and hate crimes, especially in the media frenzies that come after terrorism. Yes, there has been an increase in hate crimes against Muslims. However, it's not as much as you make it out to be, because even if it is a high percentage increase, in 2015 there was only 257 hate crimes against Muslims. And there's, what, like around 3 million Muslims within the United States? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's a very big amount of hate crimes. And of course, this is by Pew Research, so if you were wondering. And as for your other point, where do you see a media frenzy? Because I see the exact opposite. I see the left news media going out of their way to call the Muslim terrorists just terrorists or just call them shooters, like the Orlando shooting. Hmm, yeah, not called a terrorist attack. Or how about the Manchester we just had, the Manchester bombing, instead of calling it the Manchester terrorist attack, calling the guy a terrorist, a Muslim terrorist specifically, I mean. Yeah, you guys aren't being attacked. Maybe by the right-wing media a bit, but they're not going out to get you. Talks like this. Right. I know you've also talked a lot about your personal experience as a woman who wears a hijab, and especially post 9-11 and during a Trump presidency. So what were your initial thoughts when you first heard about this? I actually got the alert on my phone instantaneously, like when the when the story broke, and at first it didn't register yet. You know, immediately I was like, "Oh my God!" You know, it's an Ariana Grande concert. Of course, these are children and families, and it, it of course hit close to home because a lot of my friends are like huge Ariana Grande fans and stuff like that. Um, and then as it starts like seep in, the very next immediate realization was like, "Oh my God! I hope that it's not a Muslim." Huh? I wonder why. It couldn't possibly be that you thought that because the fact that most of the terrorists out right now who commit acts of terror are Muslim. Uh, and I think that that is a reaction that's shared by a lot of Muslims because, yeah, uh, I think when, when it comes down to it, Muslims are always correlated uh, with terrorism. Again, couldn't it possibly be because that most of the terrorist attacks are done by Muslims today? And we do have to face a, a lot of blame when it comes down to it, especially Muslim women that wear headscarves. Uh, we, we are walking targets, right? We have these targets on our heads. So because we are such a visible representation of people's understanding of Islam, we're usually the ones that are the lightning rods of, of that Islamophobia and that hate. It's 
people conflating Islam and Muslim people as a whole with ISIS, which I do not agree with people conflating all Muslims with terrorists, because as we know, most Muslims obviously are not all terrorists. However, according to Gatestone Institute, 23% of British Muslims said Islamic Sharia law should replace British law in areas with large Muslim populations. And on social issues, 52% of the Muslims surveyed said they believe homosexuality should be illegal, compared to only 22% of non-Muslim Britons. Also, British Muslims were surveyed that 35% believe Jewish people have too much power in the UK, compared to only 8% of non-Muslims. Also, there was a survey, according to the Center for Security Policy done in the United States, which found that 51% of Muslims believe that they should have a choice between American and Sharia courts, or that they should have their own tribunals to apply Sharia. Only 39% of those polled said that Muslims in the U.S. should be subject to American courts. Oh, and before we continue on, also, nearly one-fifth of Muslim respondents said that the use of violence in the United States is justified in order to make Sharia the law of the land in this country. It's a totally radical, like, offshoot that has absolutely nothing to do with Islam or its tenets, right? Kill the disbelievers wherever we find them. From Quran 2, 191. That is just one of many quotes from the Quran that is extraordinarily violent. Yeah, and the thing is, like, even if it did, even if ISIS claimed that they were Muslims, like, that has nothing to do with me. It's not my business. I don't care. Right. Um, and, and that's kind of a, a double standard that Muslims that uh, have to deal with regularly, right? It's, it's the same thing as uh, for me to go up to a Christian person and say, like, oh, you know, are you, are you part of the KKK? I'm pretty sure almost every Christian despises the KKK. However, it's not the same case with Muslims to ISIS. According to an Al Jazeera poll, 81% of Muslim respondents approve of ISIS. What's the difference between you and the KKK? How, how are you like not the same as them? Um, it's just as ridiculous. In America, 38% of American Muslims say ISIS beliefs are correct. And in Britain, about half of Muslims support ISIS. Right, and obviously these attacks are drawing a tremendous amount of anti-Islam sentiment. And so how has this manifested itself in the U.S., especially during a Trump presidency? I think that this really is a, a perfect example of the way that Islamophobia results in a lot of these national policies that we see ripping families apart, like the Muslim ban. According to the Heritage Foundation, it is not a Muslim ban. And if you'd like to hear more about it, I will have those sources down below. That are largely based off of these misconceptions about Muslims and a lot of inaccurate information about Muslims. Um, and we can also see, you know, how a Trump presidency has been absolutely devastating to marginalized communities like Muslims. Citation, please, because I call both. And that said, what can people do to be better allies to their Muslim friends in this time? It's the responsibility of our allies to kind of check their immediate social circles, especially in the aftermath, uh, like what we're going through right now, um, and to not allow, you know, even just like your family at the dinner table to say stuff that is racist against Muslims. Hey, Jessica, did you know you could be racist against Muslims? That doesn't make sense, sir. How can you be racist against Muslims if Muslims aren't a race? You know, even if you think that it's not going to leave that table, it ripples outward. Uh, correcting it is, is how that change starts, you know, on a very individual basis. Um, and it's a very simple but effective way that anyone can be an ally to Muslims, like, right within their own homes. Right. And it's especially difficult when we ha are living in this world, basically, where we have a media that tends to conflate um, terrorism and Muslims. Citation, please. Where are you pulling this bulk? <laughs> I have seen the exact opposite with media, more specifically with left news media, because let's face it, most news media is left news media, and they do the exact opposite of what you're saying, from what I can tell. 
together. Yeah. There's a lot of bad information, bad reporting. What can we do to improve media literacy? I think for us to consume media that was created by the people we're trying to learn about, by the people that we're reading about, by the people that we're trying to understand better. So basically listen to Muslims who don't know anything or know very little about their own religion, or who are just lying about it. Well that's it for today. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, I'll have all the information down below, and I'll see y'all later.